Friends, in this video for I Thought Wealth, I'm going to talk to you on the topic making sense of insider buying and selling. When a promoter or an insider buys a stock, or when a promoter or an insider sells a stock, there has to be a disclosure. That disclosure is revealed to you and I through the stock exchanges. So every day, if you set alerts on the companies that you are interested in, on the websites, then if there is an update, you get to know what the insiders are doing. You all know that insiders are not allowed to buy and sell shares during specific periods when the trading window remains closed. So companies also indicate when an insider should not trade in shares of the company. That is also something that is known to all of us and it is publicly available information. When an insider sells, you need to think why he is selling shares in a company where he knows more than you and I. Typically, insiders sell when they think a company's shares are overvalued or when they want to do something else with the money which will be more profitable to them. Obviously, insider selling is a tacit negation of the merit of ownership in the company because if ownership in the company is going to be extremely beneficial to an insider, there is no way he would sell. Sometimes an insider's shares can also get sold by financiers like we saw in the case of Z Telefilms when the shares kept falling. During that phase in a number of companies, insider shares got sold in March, April of 2020 because loans had been given against those shares and the value of the collateral declined too much and gave extreme discomfort to the lenders. So the lenders pressed the panic button and sold those shares. Insider selling has many colors. One is based on the need to reduce leverage. Somebody who has borrowed may want to repay that loan or may be forced to repay. Somebody who wants to do something else with the money may sell shares. Somebody who knows the company may not do as well in the future may sell the shares. Somebody who is going to leave the company may sell those shares. An employee may sell those shares to put that money elsewhere in some other assets. So insider selling happens for various reasons. But insider buying mostly happens for clear and valid reasons and they are good reasons most of the time. Clearly insiders buy only when they see value in owning the company or when they feel that they need to have more control in the company than they hold before that. So buying more shares gives them a higher stake in the company, better control and a better share of future performance of the company. Insider buying also reveals that insiders are more confident than sellers of those shares who don't have the kind of confidence as they do. Clearly, it's an endorsement of the company, its performance potential and its future. At times, insiders could hold too little shares and they would be creeping up just to ensure that they protect their control over the company. This happened through the 90s and even in the early part of the new century between 2000 and 2004 because insiders were holding very less in terms of ownership in companies and they needed to ensure the companies don't go out of their control. So they were forced to buy and the government on at least two instances gave opportunity for insiders to do creeping acquisitions. Now, it's not that easy as it was then, but still insiders do have a window 
of time and size within which they can acquire more shares in their companies. As investors, following what insiders do is extremely important for us. We get to know how insiders view the company. When the shares of ITC were well above 300, a lot of insiders kept selling continuously in the company. That was a good signal of how insiders were viewing the company's valuation and the potential of the shares to perform from there. The reason given by insiders then was that they wanted to buy a house or they want to do something else. But clearly, it was not a positive endorsement of the company and insiders felt they were better off with the cash than with the shares of the company. You all know what happened subsequently when the valuations of ITC kept going down and we are yet to see those elevated levels of valuation during which the insiders sold. Insider buying in many companies is also a very good indicator. We have seen it in many companies where the insiders bought. A good example is when the chairman of Tata Sons bought shares in specific Tata Group companies during the lows of 2020 and those shares have gone on to become multi-baggers, right? So he was giving a stamp of endorsement that he was positive on those companies when the market was not believing them at all. So insider buying and insider selling have their relevance, have their messaging and are very strong agents of signaling. So as investors, we should keep following them and on each individual case, we need to understand the motive of insiders to undertake investment actions, whether it is selling or buying and for us to understand what we can do based on what we infer from those actions. Do stay with us on this investment journey with I Thought Wealth. Thank you very much.